You missed it? You getting down? Y'all, Obama's trying to steal the show. So, um, today I posted some content and um, it wasn't that the content wasn't true because it was true. And a lot of it was uh, just from the perspective of marriage that I experienced. Um, and sometimes it tends to ruffle people's feathers. So first of all, let me just tell you a little bit about, about myself because I have a lot of people that are new to my page and that are new to uh, joining my Facebook group. Stop it, Obama. Yeah, my, I, I just got home, y'all. We had a, like a family emergency today and my puppy is just happy to see me. He is extremely happy. Tell him, hey, Obama. Tell him, hey. All right. So if you know me, you know that I teach. I, I talk about sex. But I also talk about things from a faith-based perspective, okay? So when I talk about marriage, and I'm talking about it from the point of view where your husband is the head, then it's coming from a faith-based perspective. Does that mean that your husband controls you? No, that is not, it does not mean that your husband controls you. Look at, all I can say is, look at me. A woman who talk about sex all day long. A woman who posts up pictures in lingerie all day long. Um, modeling lingerie. A person who talks about sex toys, positions, and all of this stuff all day long. Do I look like a woman that's being controlled? I'm not being controlled. But I'm also a woman who understands my position in the marriage. And I understand that I am not the head in the marriage. And I use the example of a team you have a team or you have a business or you have anything that a person can actually own you got the owner and then you have the manager right both of these people are part of the team but they have two completely different positions pertaining to this team now, what a lot of people don't understand is, regardless to what goes on, the owner takes on the responsibility for the team, not the manager. I am a business owner, right? I'm going to use Amber, for example. Amber manages my store. It's not Amber's job to make sure that the lights pay, that the lease is paid, that the inventory uh, is getting ordered for the store. That, that's not her job. Her job is to simply manage what I bring to the table. Right? So then we have the question as, and now keep in mind, I am the owner, she the manager. A lot of times I'm not there because a lot of times I'm making other things happen for the business. But the person that you come in contact with is the person that's managing everything. So if you experience good customer service, it's because of the management. If you experience bad customer service, it's because of the management. And a lot of times things come to the management and never make it up to the owner because the manager handling everything. The manager is delegating everything. That is the same thing that goes on in a marriage. The manager, which is normally the wife, is the one who is handling the small day-to-day tasks and all of this kind of stuff. The owner's job is to make sure that the basics is taken care of, the mortgage is paid, the utilities is paid. The manager, me, I sleep good at night because that ain't my responsibility. That's the owner's responsibility. I, I, I didn't buy this house based on my income that I live in right now. Everything, everything for this house is based on what Spencer Parker can afford. We ain't buying another house unless Spencer Parker can afford it. I'm just trying to get you to understand that when you're married to real men. Let me see which one of my babies this is crying. Hush, Emerald. Hush, Emerald. Hold on, y'all. Let me let my babies out right quick. Come on, because y'all been locked up all day. Come on. Come on. Watch that, honey. Let her out. 
All right. Sorry about that, y'all. But the problem that I see is when I'm talking about marriage and a certain level of respect and all of this kind of stuff, I'm talking about the things you do for real men. And what I see is a lot of women getting on my page and getting offended because they ain't ran into one. See, I don't mind submitting to my husband. It, when I use the term submit, it does not come off as control. The word submit simply means guidance. I have no problem with letting him guide me because I know he's not going to tell me anything wrong. He loved me to death, so why would he tell me anything wrong intentionally to hurt me? So whenever he's telling me something, I know he got my best interest at heart. So you mean to tell me I can't follow the guidance? Because of the term means he's trying to control me. And a lot of y'all wondering why y'all relationships are jacked up. Because you listening to your mama who been from Maine to Maine to Maine who ain't never been married. You looking to listen to your grandma who ain't never had nobody. Like you got to look at the people in your life that is giving you counsel and guidance and, and telling you about relationships. Look at theirs. If they have a healthy one, they're going to give you all kind of great information. But if, like the woman that sent me the message, basically she had two parents, but they didn't do nothing but argue. They couldn't get, they, they couldn't pour nothing into her. So I seen another lady that said, well, what's Sharonda saying? Even though I don't like Sharonda Parker, what she's saying is not wrong. The thing is, I could care less about who likes me. Because I run a business, and my business, it, my the, God put me here to do one thing, and that is to help married couples. That's my only purpose. A lot of people try to figure out what is my purpose in life. My purpose in life is to help married people. And even if that means saying female, woman, sister, girl, let me talk to you because me and you got a lot in common. This is what you need to do. Why wouldn't I take wise counsel from somebody who done did the on-the-job training? I'd have been married over 20 years. I'd have made the mistakes. I done, everything that I'm telling you about doing that could be done differently, I'm telling you that because I've lived it. I've lived the part where I'm trying to run shit. Stop it. Hold on, y'all. Hey, stop it. Stop, stop, stop. Y'all being bad tonight. I, I have lived trying to control everything and run everything and constantly stressing myself out because I refuse to delegate responsibility to make everybody in the household accountable. And like the woman said, well, these men don't do nothing but try to control you. Well, if the first time you see a motherfucker trying to control you in the dating process, why did you continue to date them? When you gonna hold yourself responsible? Like the woman talk about something. Well, she's trying to get us to change and be feminine, but ain't nobody trying to get these men to change and stop hoeing. If he hoeing, why are you with him? Ask yourself these questions. If these people are treating you so poorly in your relationship, why are you continuing on with this? I would be shamed to get on Facebook and tell the world, about how horrible a person is because this person trying to speak life into my relationship and marriage and all I can do is come back where the rebuttal is, they still gonna cheat. They still ain't gonna be shit. They still ain't gonna do this right. Uh, 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 sorry, y'all. Uh, one of my puppies just hit the uh, thing. They, they, still ain't gonna, they still ain't gonna do right. They still gonna cheat. They still gonna this. They still gonna that. And it's all this negativity when it come down to men, but if you keep picking all of this negativity, you gotta ask yourself, why am I continuing relationships with people who are not worthy of what I have to offer? Because the thing is, there are real men out there. There are a lot of real men out there. They got a lot of good men out there that will pay everything so you can sleep good at night. They got them out there. But guess what? You're going to have to submit to them. And that's the truth. You're going to have to be willing to take guidance from them. You're going to have to be willing to allow them to be the man in the household. You're going to have to be willing to let them correct the children. 
you're going to have to be willing for them to tell you no sometimes is not a good time for this and it's not a good time for that. You're going to have to that you're going to have to listen to them tell you no about no, we can't help your mama this month. You're going to have to be willing to let them say no, your sister can't stay with all her children. But y'all don't want nobody telling y'all nothing. So the end result is you mad, you doing everything by yourself, you struggling, COVID hit, you one paycheck away from a fucking disaster, all because you too fucking bigoted to submit to somebody who want to be good to you. And then you want to tell me about my old school principles? Let me tell you something. All this new shit y'all got going on, I don't see it working for you. I don't see this new shit working for you. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't see all this new school bitch you getting on your knees proposing to him, asking for his hand in marriage. I don't see that shit working for you. I, I don't see a lot of shit working for y'all. You want to be able to uh, do what you want to do. In other words, you only want a man for what finances he can bring to the table. And if he ain't got no finances... That's up to your standards to bring to the table and it ain't going to work because you ain't really interested in building with nobody. A lot of y'all was all fucked up with the term that I said. Oh, she said owner. Owner. Oh, he owned it. Y'all is so fucking, y'all fucked up. The owner takes the responsibility. When you get into a marriage, he don't own you as in property. He's the owner of the marriage. Meaning that he carries all the responsibility for the marriage. For example, in the marriage, he is your protector. But y'all on this, oh no, it's 50-50. Oh no, it's a partnership. Oh no, we equal. Be your protector. Somebody breaking in your house. You know what he needs to tell you? You come on with me because we 50-50. We're going to see about this shit together. Somebody breaking in our house? I ain't, I ain't, I ain't just the protector. You protecting me too. You supposed to come and see what's going on about with it, me too, cause you you equal with me. Instead of him being a man and say, "Baby, you fall back. You fall back. I got this." See, that's the kind of man I want my, on my team. The one that tell me to fall back. I got this because I understand my position. I understand my role. But what y'all want? Oh, it's 50-50. It's equal. But y'all the same ones that would be that, that want to say 50-50, but y'all also all right with paying half of the mortgage. I'm not paying half of no mortgage. I don't, you know what? If it get paid, it get paid. If it don't, it don't. I don't fucking know because guess what? That ain't my bill. Correct, Kayata. They took it out of context. They did not understand that I'm trying to get them to, uh, they did not understand that what I was saying was this person carries the responsibility. I'm about to put y'all out. Y'all want to go outside? Come here, come here, come here, Arbor. Let me see. Let me see what you got. Come here, me, my baby. Come here. So. Again, y'all on this 50-50 shit, when the man come telling y'all to go see who at the door at nighttime or when the intruder coming in your house and he telling you, oh, it's 50-50. It's 50-50. You got to come see. Because the thing is, you want to wear the pants too. And I'm sitting back here saying that I'm perfectly all right with falling back. I'm perfectly okay with that. I promise you I'm perfectly okay with that. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't, I don't, I'm not responsible for shit. See, that's the thing that y'all don't understand. My children, I'm not, I, I'm their mother. I nurture them. It's certain things that I do for them as a mother. Spencer is responsible for them. They're in his name. He's responsible. But we got so many women as single parents today. They don't understand that the father is the responsible party. We've gotten away from those things and we were wondering why we're having to raise our children by ourselves. One, because we won't submit. We have this, I ain't taking shit, I ain't doing shit. I, it's so many things that my husband has advised me on. And the reason that I'm, I'm so adamant about teaching these lessons, especially to younger wives, 
It's so many things. When I look back over the 20 plus years that we done been married, 22 years, where he has given me wise counsel, but I still did it the way that I wanted to do it. And in the end, it bit me in my ass. But guess what? Because my husband loves me so much, even though I did not listen to him, even, even though I did not take his wise counsel, when I fell flat on my ass and was in jail, you know what he did? He came and got me. He went and paid everything that needed to be paid, and he said, baby, don't worry about it. I got you. He didn't say, Sharonda, I told you better. Sharonda, you should have listened. No, no, open your mouth up. I'm going to stop that. I, I told you better. You should have listened. He said, baby, I understand. This is where compassion come in at. Because he loved me so much. Even though I didn't listen, grace came on the scene when it came down to, for me. So what I'm saying is, if you got people in your life that you can't even trust them enough to come to you to be able to give you guidance and you submit to it, you're not ready for marriage. You're not even really ready for a relationship. You, you just really need to... And, and the thing is, I promise you it's okay to be single. It is okay to be single. But be single and be happy about it. Don't be single and be bitter and then get on posts and talk shit about all of the people who want to do great things for their spouse because they have been blessed with really good spouses. Some of us have really been blessed with good spouses. Are they perfect spouses? No, they are not perfect spouses. Perfect, perfect people don't exist. But they're good and they're good to us and they're good for us. So a lot of y'all got on here and y'all took a lot of what I was saying out of context. But regardless of how you feel about it, young lady who said that she didn't even take her husband's last name, I could never understand that. And, and my thing is, like you put on the post, I'm an exit stage left. Yes, ma'am, you should exit stage left because me and you, not, we're not talking about the same thing. You're not trying to sow nothing into nobody. You're not even taking your husband's last name, which says a lot. And, and me as a woman, I could not imagine not taking Spencer's name because I am honored to be a part of his legacy because I understand what I've been blessed with. But see, when you know what you laying next to ain't hitting on shit, then you can get, you ain't got number time to get on here and tap all this little bullshit about they still gonna cheat. Everybody always telling the woman to change. Everybody always telling the woman what she need to do. Everybody always telling the woman, so when somebody gonna tell something to the men? When somebody gonna tell, but you know what? The thing is, women, we not perfect. We not perfect. And we can stand to be corrected. And the thing is, I know it's a lot of work to be done because certain terminology triggers you. The word submit triggered you. And it's nothing wrong with submitting to somebody that you love. It's nothing wrong with allowing them to guide you. And it's nothing wrong with allowing a man to really lead his family and be the head of his family. And then when I say, you might need to register for wife school, a lot of y'all sit up there talking about some, well, why would I do that? Because you're not, you, even if you get married with that mentality, you're not going to be a good wife. You may be a wife, but it doesn't mean that you're going to be an effective one. It just doesn't. And if you got somebody who's willing to give you the knowledge, I have always been smart enough to take heed to when somebody is giving me some wisdom. When somebody dropping jewels, I'm taking heed to that shit. Because I know what I got to offer, people really pay good money for it. They do. They pay good money for it. Hey. Hey. Stop it. Lastly, so many of y'all are interested in your big day, which is your wedding. Weddings are beautiful. But a wedding is nothing if you ain't got your mind right. Men have to have a feminine asset. I don't care if you really walk around thinking you that nigga. 
I don't care if you really think you gang more gangster than him. You got more heart than him and all of that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. All that hood shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. But I'm I'm a grown woman. So when I'm talking, I'm talking about your legacy. I'm talking about the things that's go on that's gonna go on generations after you done left him. So you thinking about right now, you thinking about the feel-good moment right now. What I'm trying to teach you and prepare you for is what's going to go on once you leave here. Because if your mom ain't instilled it in you, then you need to learn so that you can instill it in your children. Not just girls, but boys too. And they need to understand the importance of having a legacy and being able to have something to pass on to somebody else so we ain't got to keep starting over as black people. Y'all ain't tired. Y'all ain't tired. Y'all look at all of these other cultures who hold marriage in high regard, women who have no problem with submitting to their husbands, and I look at these people have generational wealth. I look at these people have businesses and stores and all types of shit to pass down to their children. Stop it. I'm going to whoop y'all. All because... They wise enough to understand the structure of marriage and the way that it goes. And they don't have an understanding that somebody trying to control me or force me to do something. Everything they doing, they doing it with a willing heart because they understand the impact that it's going to have on their family, their children. Rochelle, you come from a family where no one was married. And, and let me tell you something. My mom got married for insurance. My mama didn't get married for love. So the thing is, she got married for insurance because she didn't have medical insurance. And she was sick. And she needed better care. And she told the man flat out, look, I need you to marry me because I need your insurance. And he agreed to marry her only because she was sick. But the thing is, she didn't live long. My mama never taught me how to be a wife either. She was, she did a better job at teaching me how to be a mistress, how to deal with other people's husbands, but she never taught me what it was to be a wife to a man, and she never taught me what it is to be respectful and kind and submit to a man. So the thing is, when I'm telling you that I had 20 years of on-the-job training, I really had to learn from mistakes. I had to mess up and learn. So when I'm giving you this wisdom, it's because I didn't bump my head and made the mistakes. But I just think that as a people, we should just be tired of seeing everybody else elevate. And we got to keep starting over. We don't have homes to be able to leave to our children. We don't have anything, no assets to be able to leave to anybody. Because we okay with this single parents and shit. And I'm going to tell you, I mean, if you got to be a single parent, I understand it. But if you got somebody that's willing to work with you, and all you got to do is make minor changes to yourself to make this shit work, why not do the little minor changes that you need to do? And I'm speaking to you because let me tell you something about the manager, the person that's managing the team. Even if you, even if your husband is not equipped to be a good owner or leader, even if they were not equipped, if you start learning, then you can start teaching them. And then you can teach them by leading by example. For, for I'm going to use this for an example. If you just make up in your mind that I'm going to change my attitude, and when I done had a long, stressful day at work, I'm not about to come home to an attitude. I'm coming home with an attitude and take my frustrations out on everybody because I'm tired and I have all of these things to do. What you do is you come home and you smile to your family. You tell them, how y'all doing? I'm happy to see y'all. In other words, you come home and you make minor changes, even if it means that you got to take a few minutes, 30 minutes to come home and settle down and unwind before you have to deal with this, 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 that, the other. But you don't come home and take out the stress of your day on your family. I would not want to come home to that either. It's so much that we got to learn as a people. And it's so much that we have to learn as women. And y'all, I think 
in the last three months, Spencer will tell you that I have been not only applying the knowledge that I have learned over the years, but I'm actually taking that knowledge and actually writing it down in a curriculum form to where it's relate. You re y'all black women like me. Sometimes when y'all get teachings from, I'm going to say white people or whatever, culturally, they don't understand our language. Culturally, they don't sometimes understand some of the things that we go through as black women and dealing with black men and all of this. Sometimes they just don't understand. But I have been taking so much material that I have gathered over a period of time. And I'm going to do this for us. And I understand that this wife school, everybody not going to be happy about it. I understand with this wife school, some people going to talk shit about it. I get it. But I have a calling on my life. And the thing is, the same way I'm, I, I, I'm obedient to my husband and I listen and take guidance, I also hear when God is talking to me and he's telling me there's work to be done. It's work to be done. If this pandemic didn't teach you nothing else, it taught you how some of y'all one paycheck away from disaster. If they cut your hours anymore, something gonna get cut off. Right now, it's better to be together. Because you got two people bringing shit to the table. Now, let me say this here. If you can't get along with the person that you with, I need you to sit down and try to figure out the root cause of the problem. What I had to realize with Spencer, a lot of the reason that we could not get along, our number one argument, y'all may think this is crazy. We don't, we never, we don't argue about our marriage, meaning me and him. We don't argue about our children. God has graced us with wonderful children. We argue about our businesses. Because they overlap with each other. I have a contract with Spencer. I pay Spencer monthly for so much content to get created. I do this because you know if anything, you know anything about businesses, you gotta spend money because you gotta show <laughs> you gotta show Uncle Sam how you're spending it. But anyway, yeah, it come right back into my house, but I'm just trying to get you to understand something. Even though I'm paying for these services. I have deadlines. I have expectations for dates. And sometimes because I'm his wife, my things get put to the back burner. Another thing is our t-shirt business. It just seems like no matter what, we could not get on the same page. In other words, you, I'm doing the order form. You blind, you can't see. I put all this information on the order form. You go back there and you do the order. You do the order wrong. And instead of saying, you know what? I did not read this for myself correctly. You will say, you should have done this. And you should have done that. And you should have done that. And my thing is, you know what? Fuck this shit. Do this shit yourself. Because I ain't about to keep on changing the process. Because you can't see. Because you blind. So what I'm trying to get you to understand is. When you get to what the root cause of the problem is. We had to make some changes. And the change is, your customers talk to you to, to do their orders. They won't even see me or talk to me. They're not going to talk to me because they're going to talk to you. And you're going to know what they want from beginning to end. That way nothing can get misinterpreted. So I'm saying all that to say, a lot of times what y'all need to do is figure out what the root cause is. Y'all be blessed. Y'all see my dogs in the house. Spencer just pull back up. We wishing y'all a good night. Tell good night, y'all. <laughs> good night, y'all. Like and share.